Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Chapter 227 Mount Yao Old Words Two years passed in the blink of an eye. On an autumn day two years later, Su Xuanglin was lying on the roof of the Rufeng Sex Main Hall. He squinted his eyes and looked at the red clouds in the sky with a strand of green fox tail in his mouth. Very few people would go to the roof of the main hall. It was originally a place where he usually would go to alone, but at this moment, there were two other people sitting on either side of him. One was his older brother, Nangong Lu, and the other was Shi Zun Luo, who was about the same age as them. Su Xuanglin felt that he was sometimes very much like some kind of beast that bared its fangs, not easily allowing others to enter its territory. Therefore, he also did not know why he was willing to take these two people to the roof with him, to accompany him to stare blankly at the clouds, to watch the dragonflies fly low and to watch the catkins float high. Lu Air Su Air Where are you? His father's anxious and slightly angry voice came from under the veranda. Really, every time I ask them to help clean the courtyard, they run faster than rabbits. These two little bastards. Aya. Nangong Lu quietly stuck his head out from the corner of the eaves and looked cautiously. He saw his father hurrying over and then retracted his head. Ha ha, they're gone. The old man is also stupid. Su Suanglin lazily crossed his legs and looked at him disdainfully. He never knew to come to the roof to look for us. Luo Fenghua was however a bit uneasy. Is it all right for us to do this? Sai, why don't you go down in a moment? Don't make the sect leader worry. What does it matter? Anyway, even if the sky falls, we'll hold it up. Nangong Lu made a face at him. What are you worried about? Ah Su, tell him it's all right. Su Suanglin didn't say anything. He spat out the fox tail in his mouth, stretched his body, then sat up straight and said, Give me some melon seeds. Nangong Lu poured more than half of the melon seeds he brought up into Su Suanglin's hand. Su Suanglin slowly ate the melon seeds while squinting his eyes. He looked at Luo Fenghua with amusement and uneasiness. He licked off a piece of melon seed on his lips and smiled. Is she unscared? I just don't think it's a good idea. What's not good about it? Su Suanglin said, if the old man blames you, I'll give him a hard time. Luo Fenghua. Su Suanglin then extended his hand to Luo Fenghua. Give me an orange. I thought you didn't like it. Su Suanglin frowned. You're so long-winded. Are you going to give it to me or not? If not, I'll grab your ankles and throw you down. Ah Su, be nice when you're talking to Shizun. What Shizun? That's just for outsiders to hear, Su Suanglin said. Which Shizun would sneak onto the roof with his disciple to eat melon seeds? Luo Fenghua was embarrassed by his words and slowly lowered his head. Su Suanglin loved to see him like this. Every time he saw him like this, he felt like a bully toying with the weak. He stared at Luo Fenghua for a while and suddenly grinned, revealing a mouthful of white teeth. Shi Zungega, am I not right? Shi Zungega was a nickname that Su Xuanglin came up with on a whim. It was respectful and affectionate, but there was also a hint of teasing hidden within the intimate name. Thus, Luo Fenghua appeared very anxious and sad. No, don't call me that. A title does not matter. Shi Zungega said it so himself. Luo Fenghua. After teasing him, Su Xuanglin extended his hand again and pestered him again. I want an orange. You said you don't like it? I only brought one. It's for Alu. Su Xuanglin's eyes widened, but he didn't glare at Luo Fenghua. Instead, he turned his head and glared at his older brother. Nangong Lu was stuffing pastries into his mouth when he suddenly choked. He waved his hand vaguely and said, Well, I don't really want to eat oranges today. Shizun, you can give it to him. Luo Fenghua thought for a moment and said, Then, you can each have half of it. As he spoke, he wiped the orange on his sleeve and peeled off the skin. 
he wanted to break it in half fairly, but one side was still bigger and the other was smaller. Thus, Luo Fenghua appeared to be a little distressed. Perhaps it was because he came from a poor family, but he was always troubled by such trivial matters. Sai. Give me the big one. Su Suanglin didn't stand on ceremony. He took the orange and made the choice for Luo Fenghua, who was trying to be fair. Give him the small one. Luo Fenghua said, don't always bully your older brother. Before he could finish speaking, a rind of juicy orange was stuffed into his mouth. He opened his round eyes in shock and looked at Su Suanglin blankly and confusedly. What are you talking about? Su Suanglin sneered. His attitude was sloppy but his eyes were very gentle. I still have to share my half with Shizun. Nangong Lu also came over and took the other half of the orange. He counted the number of pieces and divided them into several pieces, handing them to Su Suanglin and Luo Fenghua. The later who would become sect leader of the Rufeng sect chuckled. Under the sunset, his soft hair slightly covered his forehead. Su Suanglin looked at him in amusement. What are you doing? Let's eat this orange together. He also divided the melon seeds, pastries, and candied fruits into three piles. Just like these snacks, let's eat them together. You, you are really. Luo Fenghua seemed to be trying to regain his dignity, but whether it was Su Suanglin or Nangong Lu, they were unrepentant. Instead, they looked at him with a bit of friendliness, but also with a bit of mischief. Luo Fenghua was happy to see this kind of friendly expression, but he also felt it was absurd. After half a day, he muttered, you are really just messing around. Nangong Lu said, we are not messing around, we are not messing around. And even if we did, we are messing around together. When Su Suanglin heard this, he finally burst out laughing. He supported himself with one hand on the roof and supported his forehead with the other. He smiled and said, all right, then the three of us will eat oranges and snacks together in the future. He paused for a moment and then looked up at the magnificent scenery from the roof of the Rufeng Sex main hall. He grinned and said, if there is a roof, let's climb up together. The scene flashed by. It was still that year during the Lantern Festival. Su Suanglin was barefoot and had a leaf in his mouth. He was walking lazily on the main path of the Rufeng sect. From time to time, he would point and say, hang that lantern a bit higher. I'm talking to you. Why did you hang it so low? Someone with short legs should go up. Suddenly, an anxious voice came from behind him. Ah Su, wait a minute. Su Suanglin turned around and saw Luo Fenghua coming over with a pair of shoes. He frowned and said, why are you running around without shoes again? This path is full of spirit refining stones. Without shoes, it's easy to absorb spiritual power. The weather is so cold. What does this little bit of spiritual power count for? Hurry up and put it on. Look at you, your toes are red from the cold. Tisk, you are so long-winded and a worrywart. Although he said that, Su Suanglin still slowly put on the shoes. He didn't have any regards for manners and pulled on the shoes deliberately slow. Then he narrowed his eyes and asked Luo Fenghua, what's wrong? Are you free now? Do you want to go outside with me and stroll around the lantern market? Alu hasn't finished his homework yet. I have to finish his lesson before I can. Before he could finish speaking, Su Suanglin interrupted him. He raised his chin and said with an arrogant look in his eyes, my brother is an idiot. If you want to watch him do his homework, then you'll have to spend the entire Lantern Festival night doing it. It's a waste of time. Luo Fenghua smiled good-naturedly and said, but it's fine. I don't really like crowds. Su Suanglin glared at him for a while. Suddenly, he angrily kicked his shoes and sent them flying far away. Luo Fenghua was stunned. What's wrong with you? I'm not wearing them, I won't wear it. Get lost, get lost. Su Suanglin exclaimed. Wear shoes. It's cold. 
I'm not wearing it. Get lost. Are you angry? Su Suanglin had a disgusted look on his face. Angry? What's there to be angry about? You and my brother are both idiots and paupers. There's nothing better than celebrating a festival together. Go on. Don't pay attention to me. After he finished speaking, he waved his hand and walked forward casually. At that time, he actually hoped that Luo Fenghua would chase after him. Even if his feet were red from the cold, he didn't care. He was going to kick off both his shoes and wait for someone to call him from behind and tell him in a panic that he was going to catch a cold. Su Suanglin walked forward expectantly. But after waiting for a while, Luo Fenghua didn't chase after him, nor did he call out to him. He paused and couldn't help but slow down his pace. He walked until he was about a hundred meters away and was about to reach the city gate. Still, no one called out to him. He cracked his knuckles and thought to himself, forget it. He didn't have any playmates since he was small anyway. For many years, he walked around alone during the Lantern Festival. What's the big deal? He walked down the steps. One level. Two level. Finally, he suddenly turned around. His nose wrinkled and his face changed. He couldn't help but shout, Luo Fenghua. Luo Fenghua didn't leave. In fact, he stood at the same place he was still holding the shoes. He was in a dilemma and didn't know what to do. When he heard Su Suanglin's shout, he suddenly came back to his senses. His eyes widened and he said dazedly, Ah! Forget it! He really had to hand it to him. So that year during the Lantern Festival, he and Su Suanglin stayed by Nangong Liu's side. Nangong Lu was extremely vexed as he tried to memorize the spell scroll. He rolled his eyes and recited, One Kun 5 Fen below the precordium is the Juke Cup ointment and the heart screen. When hit, one will lose consciousness. Below the right lung a cup ointment, below, what was that again? He scratched his head and said, I can't remember again. Stupid. I'll let you die from your stupidity. Su Suanglin knocked his brother's head with the bamboo scroll. His face was full of anger. The next half of the point, hit with your arm and you'll wake up. If you don't recover after waking up, you'll die after a hundred days. The Shufen A cup ointment on the navel belongs to the small intestine and stomach meridian. You'll die after 28 days. This is the ninth time. Why didn't you die from your stupidity yet? Nangong Lu looked very depressed. He leaned on the table and sighed. Then he looked up and blew a strand of soft hair on his forehead. I also feel that I'm very stupid. If only I was as smart as you. Impossible. Su Suanglin said firmly, dream on. The warm curtain was lifted and closed. Luo Fenghua, who had just gone out to cook for the Lantern Festival, came back. He was wearing a thick cloak. His pitch black hair and curled eyelashes were dotted with tiny bits of snow. Under the illumination of the fire, his ordinary looking face was somewhat pleasing to the eye. It was like the coming spring when the last snow fell, it was beautiful. You've been memorizing for a long time. Eat some lantern festival food and rest for a while. Luo Fenghua brought the wooden tray over. There were three bowls of Tang Yuan, one for each person. Nangong Lu cheered and immediately rushed to the table. He was about to reach out his hand when he was pulled back by the person behind him. Su Suanglin's face was gloomy. Why are you in such a hurry? Where's your manners? You don't even give your thanks. Nangong Lu was speechless. He seemed to be surprised that his brother who was the unruliest, would talk to him like this. What? Seeing his brother squinting his eyes dangerously, Nangong Lu quickly waved his hands. Like an obedient boy, he flicked his sleeves and bowed deeply. When he raised his head back, he jokingly said, This humble one thanks Shizun for the gift. Luo Fenghua. When Su Suanglin saw how mischievous this man was acting, he felt both angry and amused at the same time. 
He thought about it and guessed that he had probably learned this from a novel, so he said, All right, let's eat. Luo Fanghua rubbed his somewhat stiff and red hands and put them to his mouth. Su Suanglin helped him remove his cloak. He was somewhat flattered. Ah, you don't have to trouble yourself. Su Suanglin didn't bother to listen to him and instead asked trying to sound indifferent, is it snowing outside? Yes, it just snowed. I don't know if it will pile up tonight. If it did, we can have a snowball fight tomorrow. She's on. This sudden address was definitely not respectful, but mocking. How old are you? Luo Fanghua smiled and his eyelashes were soft. Su Suanglin looked at him and couldn't help but felt tenderness in his heart. However, when he noticed this tenderness, he felt infuriated for no reason. He hurriedly looked for any reason to vent. Luo Fanghua didn't let him down. He quickly found a reason. He pointed at a patch on the cloak and said disdainfully, Are you that poor? You've been in the Rufang sect for so long. Why don't you throw away this piece of junk? If you wear it outside, people will think that we're bullying you. Are you stupid? Luo Fanghua immediately became nervous. This it is just a little wear and tear. It can still be worn after mending it. When I think about how many people in the lower cultivation world are suffering, I can't eat and drink well. The money to buy a cloak can buy more than 10 talismans and give them to people who need them. This one is still good. Su Suanglin's finger was still poking at the patch. He glared at him angrily. Luo Fanghua cautiously looked for his disciples' approval. Don't you agree? I think that's dumb and you're poor. Although he said that, he still hung the cloak back on the shelf. The three of them sat around the stove and ate Tang Yuan. They couldn't see the lanterns on the lantern festival, but these three young people who were about the same age got together and talked. They didn't feel bored at all. It was snowing outside the window. Frost covered the edge of the red window lattice, making it crystal clear. The firewood in the room crackled, making the room feel like spring. After drinking some wine, the atmosphere became even better. Luo Fenghua couldn't persuade them, so he took the Kong Hao from Nangong Lu. His cheeks were red as he was a little drunk. He fiddled with the Kong Hao a few times and sang a folk song from his hometown. Three or four flowers fall in the pond, one or two strings ring on the shore. Young people are the best. Light hooves and fast horses, see all the flowers in the world. She's on, she's on, this is a good song. What was it called? Young people's song. Luo Fenghua gently said, it's a short song from Shu. I think it's very appropriate for the occasion. Nangong Lu raised his head and laughed. His smile was always overly warm and had a hint of flattery, but after drinking so much wine, it was actually a bit straightforward and heartfelt. Ha ha ha, young people's song sounds nice and we are indeed youths, high-spirited and vigorous. Su Suanglin crossed his arms and snorted. You can't memorize a book even after trying nine times. Which young man is as stupid as you? Aya, everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses. Nangong Lu smiled. He actually had the energy to refute his younger brother. Although you're a genius, maybe I also have my own talents. You drank too much. Luo Fenghua also laughed. He raised his wine cup and said, I hope you'll live a fulfilling youthful life and you'll each realize your own strengths and be gentlemen for life. Nangong Lu clapped his hands and put his arm around his younger brother's shoulder. Su Suanglin felt uncomfortable and pushed him away. Nangong Lu didn't mind. He laughed and said, She's on, I suddenly remembered that although we don't light the river lanterns, we still have to make wishes. Let's all make wishes. Su Suanglin's mouth twitched. I think making wishes is disgusting. Luo Fenghua said, write it on paper. After you're done, throw it into the fire. It'll come true. In the end, they all wrote down their wishes. There was no need to say what Luo Fenghua's wish was. He had already talked about it when he was drinking. 
Nangong Lu had learning difficulties. He liked to write and read at the same time. I hope. To eat and drink well, to have great prospects, to be harmonious, to be reunited. Su Suanglin was disgusted, but there was also a subtle emotion mixed in with his disgust. He was the son of a concubine. Not many people paid attention to him at home. It was only after Luo Fenghua came that he had company. He, Nangong Lu and Shizun often played together and cultivated together. Rather than saying that Luo Fenghua was his teacher, it would be better to say that he was the first close friend he had in his life. Because of Luo Fenghua, he was no longer so jealous of his brother who was useless but attracted attention because of his status as the son of the first wife. They spent time together day and night. He even saw some of Nangong Liu's endearing moments. What did Ah Su write? Su Suanglin didn't answer. He casually threw the folded paper into the fire pit. His wish was quickly swallowed up by the light and heat. The splashing flames reflected in his eyes. I didn't write anything. It's just a blank piece of paper. Luo Fenghua and Nangong Lu were greatly disappointed. They showed a somewhat despondent expression. Su Suanglin grinned. There was a hint of sweetness in his wicked smile, and there was a kind of self-satisfaction that came from teasing people. I lied to you. The handwriting in that ball of paper was neat and tidy, and every stroke was very serious. It said. I hope that the three of us, Luo Fenghua, Nangong Su, and Nangong Lu, can be family and friends for the rest of our life. Eat oranges together, share pastries together and climb the roof together. From our young age until our head became full of white hair. End chapter. Dumb Husky and his white cat Shizun. Chapter 228. Mount Yao All for Naught. On the sole summoning platform of the Rufeng sect, Su Suanglin looked at the specks of golden light drifting in the night sky. He suddenly felt that it was very similar to the paper he threw into the fire pit on that snowy night during the lantern festival. It burned to ashes in an instant. Only a few sparks remained, scalding him despite the years that passed. I hope that the three of us, Luo Fenghua, Nangong Su, and Nangong Lu, can be family and friends for the rest of our life. But Nangong Su was no longer in the human world. The one standing here now was Su Suanglin. He was a madman, a demon, and the one who crawled back from the depths of hell to claim the lives of all the upright gentlemen in the world. Nangong Su was no longer in the world. He was just like his name, drifting and floating in the boundless world. As time passed, even the rocky cliffs could shatter and break, not to mention this small insignificant puff of willow catkin. After so many years, the willow tree grew old, the maple tree withered and has started to fade. What he saw was not the world's flowers, but the blood that covered the mountains and the plains, and the overwhelming hatred. But still, why did he impart all the knowledge that Lu Fenghua taught him in the past to Ye Wangzi without second thoughts? Why did he feel compassion when he saw a true gentleman and a kind person? Why did he stop being ruthless? Why, why did he cry? Su Suanglin knelt on the soul summoning platform. He finally lost it and broke out a loud wail. Tears flowed down his ugly, twisted face. He rubbed the spiritual core that held Luo Fenghua. He finally cried out until his voice was hoarse and his throat was torn apart. It was as if every bit of his voice was being dug out from his throat and blood. Shizun. Luo Fenghua. He had meticulously planned everything. He was full of madness and hatred, distortion, and longing. He used his whole life to set everything up. And it was ruined, just like that. He thought of the Lingshan Mountain Conference which result filled him with resentment. Later on, his father passed on the position of sect leader to Nangong Lu. He was unwilling to accept it and seized the position in anger. He still remembered his father's old and pale face, staring at him in disbelief. The position of sect leader is mine. He gripped his father's throat and slowly tightened his grip. His expression was cold and ruthless, a sharp light flashing in his eyes. 
If father doesn't want to destroy the hundred years of foundation of the Rufang sect, then I better take it. You are already old, you can rest now. Su Er. He closed his eyes and didn't allow his father to continue speaking. The meridians in his hand suddenly bulged and he heard a heart-piercing crack. It was the sound of a throat breaking. He took off the sect leader's ring of the Rufang sect and pressed it against his lips. The thumb ring was cold, but not as cold as his face. I just want justice. If you don't give it to me, I'll take it myself. Father, you don't have to hate me in the underworld. He turned around and left. The scene in his memories changed. It was the first night after he usurped the sect leader position, the servants were cleaning up the bloodstains from the battle. His father was dead, Nangong Liu's family was locked up in the water dungeon and all those who tried to fight against him were suppressed. Everything was settled. For the moment, he did not know what else to do. He lit a stove in the courtyard and made tea for himself. He was the only one in the courtyard. He rubbed the glittering sect leader's ring on his thumb. Henceforth, he was the sect leader of the Rufang sect. Needless to say that those outsiders who schemed against him at the Lingshan Mountain Sword Conference naturally had to be chopped up and killed. But he didn't know how to deal with his older brother. He didn't know how to deal with Luo Fanghua either. Dusk gradually deepened, the golden crow set in the west. Seeing that the sky was darkening, Su Xuanglin finally made up his mind to go to the water dungeon to see his elder brother and Shi Zun who were being held captive. He took several attendants with him. Halfway there, the last ray of sunlight was swallowed up by the dark night. He shivered and suddenly felt his body was a little cold. His head also felt a little dizzy. Sect leader, what's wrong? Su Xuanglin waved away the servant who wanted to help him. He said, it's nothing. I suddenly remembered there's something I haven't dealt with properly. I'll go back to the main hall first. You don't have to follow me. He suppressed the pain that was becoming more and more obvious. He put on the hood of his cloak and strode toward the main hall of the Rufang sect. In the end, he couldn't take it anymore. Even if he could endure it, the pain is becoming more and more unbearable. After running for a while, he pushed open the door and went in. Then he closed the door heavily. Sec leader. He turned to the group who addressed him and said, All of you, stand guard at the door. Don't come in and don't act rashly. If there's anything strange, report to me immediately. After giving the orders to the guards, Su Xuanglin gasped for breath and staggered into the depths of the hall. He abruptly took off his hood and when he lowered his head to look, he found that his skin and flesh were all chapped and cracked, and there were hideous scars everywhere he looked in his body. His first thought was that his father had cursed him. But then he felt that it was impossible. That old man was already beyond cure. He didn't even have the strength to use any spell. How could he do such a thing without him noticing? Then what was going on? It was too painful. His muscles were broken and his flesh was hideous. He couldn't stop convulsing and trembling by the window. His knuckles were pale and twisted. He lay on the ground and scratched out red marks. It was really too painful. He didn't dare to call out, nor did he dare to ask for medical attention. The situation was not stable yet. As the leader of a rebellion, how could he reveal even half an inch of weakness? He kept gasping and groaning in the main hall, rolling and twitching in pain. Feeling such excruciating pain, he kicked out and inadvertently pulled down a part of the curtain. The curtain fell on his body. The moonlight from the window was blocked by the curtain. He suddenly felt the pain abate. He was drenched in cold sweat. He shrank under the curtain and gasped for breath. After a while, thinking that the pain had passed, he pulled down the curtain again and sat up straight, wanting to stand up. Who would have thought that as soon as the moonlight shone on him, his skin and flesh would split open again and the pain would penetrate his muscles and bones. Su Suanglin suddenly realized he was being affected as soon as the moonlight shone on him. So, 
he staggered up and struggled to close the window tightly. He hid in the darkest area in the main hall, where he couldn't even see his own fingers. His breathing gradually calmed down. The pain disappeared. His bleeding skin and flesh also healed at a speed visible to the naked eye. Su Suanglin felt something was amiss. Therefore, he wrapped himself in a cloak so that not even the slightest bit of skin was exposed. He hurried to the library and rummaged through the records for half the night. Finally, he found a scroll of past records in his grandfather's bookcase. It turned out that the founding sect leader of the Rufeng sect, Nangong Zhengying, once had a great battle with Gun. Although in the end he defeated the evil beast and suppressed it under the Golden Drum Pagoda, he was cursed by Gun. That ancient evil beast powers were that of Yin Attribute, which was closely related to the night and the moonlight. It cursed the successive generations of sect leaders of the Rufeng sect. As soon as the moonlight shone on them, their skin and flesh would be torn apart, and the pain would penetrate their heart and bones. And every full moon night, the Yin Aura was the strongest. Even if one hid in the darkest corner where the moonlight could not shine on, he would still feel extreme torment. Therefore, for several hundred years, this had always been the Rufeng sect's biggest secret. Successive generations of sect leaders had always kept it a secret, for fear that someone would take advantage of this opportunity to cause trouble. Even if it was their own son, the sect leader would not reveal the truth until the last moment. It was really ironic. He had gone through so much trouble, but what he obtained was actually a cursed position of power. The next day, Su Suanglin came to the water prison. Nangong Lu and his wife Rong Yan were locked inside, while Luo Fenghua was being held in another secret room. He did not go to see Luo Fenghua, but opted to first go to his older brother's prison. Asu. Asu. What are you doing? What are you doing? As soon as he saw him, Nangong Lu was extremely excited, but his hands and feet were sealed by a spell, so he could not move at all. He could only kneel on the ground and cry to his younger brother, Are you crazy? Is it necessary for you to go to this extent for the position of sect leader? After a night of torture, Su Suanglin's complexion was still pale. He sneered, I'm just taking what I deserve. You stole my technique and ruined my reputation. I'm only 20 years old, Nangong Lu. He paused, his eyes cold, I'm only 20 years old, but you already sentenced me to a lifetime of mediocrity. He slowly walked over, his robe touching the ground and then lowered his face, staring at his older brother's face. Nangong Lu, if trash like you have the ambition for power, and want to stand out. Then what about me? He said slowly, I'm more hardworking than you, more talented than you, I'm better than you in everything, but I can't compare to your tongue. He pinched Nangong Liu's chin, and used two fingers to pry open his tightly shut mouth. He stared at the slippery, sticky, light red thing inside. It's really a sharp weapon that kills without spilling blood. It should be cut. Nangong Lu opened his eyes wide in horror, but because his mouth was blocked, he could not speak. He could only whimper, saliva continuously flowing down. No. Su Suanglin sneered, it's fine if you don't cut your tongue. Seeing that you and I are brothers, I'll kill you quickly. It'll be my mercy. As soon as he let go, Nangong Lu wailed, don't kill me. Don't kill me. If this is about the Lingshan Mountain Sword Conference, just let me go. You'll get your justice. I'll tell the truth in front of the whole world. It's too late. Su Suanglin took out a snow white handkerchief, wiped his hands and glanced at him indifferently. No matter what you say now, the whole world will only think that you were forced to admit it because I pressured you. The dirty water you poured on me can never be washed clean. Before Nangong Lu could speak, he heard a woman's sharp voice next to him. Nangong Su. I know you were wronged in the first place, but what do you think you are doing now? You killed your own father, stole the sect leader's ring, and now you want to kill your brother, you, how can you be so cruel? Oh, 
Rongshija, Su Suanglin smiled slightly, if you didn't speak, I would have forgotten that you were here as well. Although Rong Yan was restrained by a spell and was also kneeling, her expression was fierce and stubborn. Although there were tears in her eyes, she was not showing any weakness, I... I really misjudged you. So, what if you changed your opinion of me? Su Suanglin smiled, you were the one who gave me your perfume sachet and yet married Nangong Lu. You were the one who betrayed me first. Sister-in-law, how can you bring up the past with me now? You're not going to tell me that you were forced by him, right? Rong Yan's face turned pale. She seemed to want to say something but in the end, she just bit her lower lip and slowly closed her eyes. Tears flowed down her cheeks. The knife was already in his hand, shining with a cold light. No, no. Ah Su, you can tell me to do anything, I will tell you anything you want. Don't kill me. I beg you, don't kill me. Could it be that you still did not understand your place? Su Suanglin wiped the knife, the corner of his mouth still had that wicked smile, Nangong Lu, now I'm the sect leader and you're just a prisoner. You have nothing in your hands and you still want to bargain with me. What are you going to use as a bargaining chip, your useless life? I can work like a horse for you. I can. I can be your slave, I, I'm willing to do anything. As long as you agree. I, I can give you Rong Shija to do whatever you like. Rong Yan suddenly opened her eyes and turned her head to her husband. She was extremely angry as she shouted, Nangong Lu. Nangong Lu was scared to death. He ignored his wife and just sobbed to his brother, as long as you let me go, please let me go. That's enough. Su Suanglin lazily patted his face with the hilt of his knife, do you think I'd touch an orange that you've already licked? Then I can still I can still Nangong Lu racked his brains, but couldn't think of anything, only tears and snot running down his face. In the end, he burst into tears, Ah Su, we once said that we'd eat pastries together, and climb rooftops together. We cultivated together, celebrated the Lantern Festival with Shizun, and learn to play the zither. Have you, have you forgotten all those days? Su Suanglin's expression darkened, but in the end, he just sneered and didn't answer. He raised his knife, and after a while, he swung it down. Ah! Wait a minute! The cold blade stopped just inches away from Nangong Liu's neck. In fact, Su Suanglin wasn't sure if his knife would have been able to move towards that few inches even without these two shouts. But his expression didn't change and his tone was indifferent as he asked, What now? The two of you sure have a lot of last words. End chapter. Dumb Husky and his White Cat Shizun. Chapter 229. Mount Chiao from then on, it became cloudy. Rong Yan did not look at her husband. Instead, she opened her moist almond eyes and straightened her back. Choking with sobs, she said, For the sake of our former friendship, can you allow me to give birth to this child? Su Suanglin's gaze slowly moved down to Rong Yan's lower abdomen. At first glance, there was nothing unusual, but upon closer inspection, there was indeed a slight bulge. Rong Yan kowtowed, but her face was cold. I beg you. The guilt of this child's father is irrefutable. But Nangong Su, I beg you to please spare your nephew's life. Su Suanglin stared at this woman for a while. He thought she was ridiculous. Spare the vile spawn in her belly. That was just a pile of rotten meat that had not yet taken shape. Whether it was his nephew or his niece, why would it matter to him? But in that moment, he suddenly remembered the bone-piercing pain he suffered last night. Su Suanglin stared blankly for a moment. He suddenly realized that this was a very good thing the position of sect leader of the Rufeng sect could only be inherited by the young master after the old sect leader had passed away or by seizing the position by force. As for the rest, whether he abdicated the position to a worthy person or retired as per request of the sect, it was all useless. Therefore, 
abdicating the position to Nanganglu was already impossible. But a hundred years later, he could pass the position to Nanganglu's child and let that child have a taste of the pain of sitting in this position. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? The son would repay the father's debt, nothing could be better than that. In a moment, his mood improved. A brilliant smile appeared on his face. And then, without waiting for the two people to react, he threw the saber away, turned around and walked out of the prison door while laughing out loud. Later on, he did not kill Nanganglu nor did he kill Rong Yan. Instead, he put them under house arrest in a small courtyard. He planned to wait until the child was born and then immediately confer the title of the next sect leader and establish a blood contract with the child. Perhaps when the time came, the whole world would praise him for being magnanimous and forgiving, wouldn't it? But he didn't live to see that day. Not long after he succeeded the throne, he committed numerous atrocities. For a period of time, he accumulated deep resentment inside and outside the sect. Later on, there was a city master who harbored resentment toward him. Taking advantage of his unpreparedness, he secretly released Nanganglu and Luo Fenghua, these two key people. Luo Fenghua was not aware of what was happening behind his back. He only thought that Nangong Su was doing all of these atrocities for the sake of keeping the sect leader position. Moreover, Nangong Liu's poisonous tongue only made him more and more disheartened. Thereupon he joined hands with Nangong Lu to seize the position, with the intention of driving Su Xuanglin off the sect leader's seat which had not even warmed up yet. That night, a fight for the sect leader position broke out resulting in hundreds of casualties. Amidst the chaos, Luo Fenghua was the first to find Su Xuanglin, who had taken refuge in the Xiaoya courtyard. It was a full moon night. Su Xuanglin was in severe pain. His whole body was covered in blood. He was lying in the forest, like a snake that had been skinned alive. All that was exposed was bright red flesh. When Luo Fenghua saw him, he thought that he had been injured by a spell in the chaos of the fight. Although he felt resentment in his heart, he couldn't help but feel compassion for his former beloved disciple. Su Suanglin raised his head, trembling in the forest and showed a trace of a bitter smile. You're here. Whenever I fought with him, you always end up helping him. Luo Fenghua said, this time you went too far. Did you kill Grandmaster Tian Chan? That's right. What about Taoist Lin? He deserved to die. What about your father? After a moment of silence, Su Xuanglin said, he was unfair. He believed that I was a thief. He was asking for it. Luo Fenghua closed his eyes. His eyelashes were somewhat wet. You. How did you end up like this? Ha. Huh. Su Xuanglin laughed sinisterly. Only others are allowed to betray me but I'm not allowed to betray others. Only others are allowed to stab me, but I'm not allowed to draw my sword. Is this what you call the way of a gentleman? Luo Fenghua's expression was extremely torn. He swayed in place for a while, then walked in front of Su Xuanglin. Before he spoke, tears flowed down first. Why are you crying? What's there to cry about? Su Xuanglin was angry for no reason. If you want to kill me, do as you please. Why do you have to shed a few drops of fake tears in front of me? Anyway, in your eyes, in the eyes of the old man, in everyone's eyes, that good for nothing will always be more important than me. Luo Fenghua shook his head. He didn't say anything. He raised his hand and chanted a forbidden spell. I've forbidden the spell that you learned with me when we were young. Luo Fenghua said, from now on, Nangong Su, you and I are no longer master and disciple. Su Suanglin felt a heart-wrenching pain. The gun's curse was truly heart-wrenching. He rested in place for a while, then said stubbornly, Don't think too highly of yourself. I've never thought of you as my master. Luo Fenghua stared blankly at him. After a long time, he seemed to want to say something, but there was a clamor behind him. The soldiers were approaching, 
the shadows of swords and knives were flashing. Nangong Lu rushed over. She's on. When he saw Su Xuanglin and Luo Fenghua talking, his heart suddenly felt weak. He immediately said anxiously, She's on, don't listen to him no matter what he says. He's lying to you. Su Xuanglin chuckled. This elder brother of his was always so naive and cute. Did he think that he would still bitterly pull on Luo Fenghua's clothes and explain the whole story, the cause and effect? Not anymore. For him, life was like a game of chess. Once a move was made, the previous hundreds of twists and turns in his heart were no longer important. The only thing that mattered was the result. A person who had been killed was dead and the blood that had been spilled was already spilled. He couldn't clear his name and he didn't want to clear it himself. Luo Fenghua would never forgive him. There was no need to say anything else. He supported himself on a nearby tree and staggered to his feet. The moonlight shone on his face. His skin and flesh split open inch by inch. It was bloody and hideous. When Nangong Lu and the surrounding cultivators saw this, they couldn't help but take a step back. Someone misunderstood and said in astonishment, This, this is Cultivator Luo's doing? Thousand knives curse, this is too cruel. Su Xuanglin grinned, revealing a mouthful of ghastly white teeth. He stared at his older brother outside the forest. He suddenly felt that he didn't want to let this pair of master and disciple go so easily. Thereupon, he turned his head and said to Luo Fenghua, Tell them to get lost. I have something that I want to tell you personally before I die, something that I would tell to you and you alone. He supported himself on the pine tree and slowly moved with Luo Fenghua to a dark place. The moonlight was covered by the dense shadows. Su Suanglin's complexion gradually relaxed. His chapped skin also began to heal little by little. Although there were still many small scars, they weren't as scary as before. Su Suanglin didn't turn his head. With his back facing Luo Fenghua, he first asked, You came here alone with me. Aren't you afraid that I'll kill you? You won't. If you wanted to kill me or Alu, you could have done it a year ago. Su Suanglin suddenly turned his head. His eyes flashed with an intense and twisted light. Ridiculous. Do you really think you have me figured out? Luo Fenghua suddenly looked at his face and opened his eyes wide. Your scars. They're not as bad as earlier, right? Su Suanglin sneered. What do you think this is? An incantation? Ling Chi. He slowly raised his hand. In the palm of his hand, he pinched a ring that was flashing with a faint light. He put his lips together and said with ridicule and malice, This ring has a spirit attached to it. When you and Nangong Lu drove me down from the position of sect leader, it fell from my thumb by itself. It knows that I'm no longer the rightful sect leader of the Rufeng sect. However, there are two leaders who are scheming against each other, so it doesn't know who it should recognize. You took Aliu's position, so naturally it should be returned to him. Su Suanglin grinned. That's exactly what I think. He stuffed the ring into Luo Fenghua's hand. In the end, he even solemnly patted it twice and said, Hold it well, hold it tight. In a moment, when you go out, give this good thing to him. Remember, you must personally put it on for him. He's the real sect leader of the Rufeng sect. He paused for a moment and stared at Luo Fenghua's face, which was filled with pain. Then he leaned over, lowered his voice, and said in his ear, Next, I'm going to tell you a secret. Don't be afraid. This secret isn't dark at all. It's just a heroic past, that's all. Slowly, in a low voice he told the story of when Nangong Zhongying subjugated the gun and how it attached a curse to the leader of the Rufeng sect and his future generations. Full of malice, he dipped his teeth into poisonous fangs and pierced them into Luo Fenghua's flesh. He saw Luo Fenghua's expression become more and more unsightly, his round eyes becoming wider and wider. He saw Luo Fenghua pushed against a tree, trembling slightly. 
he felt extremely happy. Ha! Huh. Didn't you always spoil him? You, all of you, don't you all treat Nangong Lu as a treasure? I want you to personally deliver the poison to him. The corners of Su Xuanglin's mouth slowly widened, and then he revealed a sinister and treacherous smile like a lynx. He raised his hand and stroked Luo Fenghua's cheek. She's on, the story is over. You can go now. He paused, and his expression became even brighter. Go to the Rufeng sect 6th generation sect leader Nangong Lu. Go. That day, he was covered in blood. He flew away from the Rufeng sect on his sword and wandered for half a night. Exhausted, he landed in Kaidi town in Sichuan. He came across a little girl sitting in the courtyard. When the little girl saw he was injured and bleeding all over, she was so scared that her face turned pale and she trembled, but she still poured a bowl full of water from the house and gave it to him to drink. He drank the water and stared at her. He didn't know why, but he suddenly felt that the little girl looked very similar to his close friend, his benevolent master and his mortal enemy. Her eyes were very similar to Luo Fenghua's. He saw the orange tree in the courtyard that was full of fruit. Suddenly he had an idea and wanted to eat it very much. But the little girl's words were filled with rancid, sour scent as she spoke about a gentleman's righteousness. It was as if he could see that ridiculous Luo Fenghua sincerely saying, I hope you'll live a fulfilling youthful life and you'll each realize your own strengths and be gentlemen for life. It was really ridiculous. He shook off the oranges, cut down the orange tree and then swaggered away, leaving the little girl crying in the courtyard. But he was still angry. That night he indiscriminately killed several more villagers. He raised his sword and cut them down. The more he dissociated away from the word gentleman, the happier he felt. And then he left, intending to conceal his identity for the rest of his life. But then he heard while he was in some random tea house that Luo Fenghua had usurped the sect leader position and became the first sect leader of Rufeng sect with his surname. The customers in the tea house were all saying, I, who would have thought? It's really true that you can't judge a book by its cover. Poor Nangong Lu raised his army to plot a rebellion never realizing that it would be a wedding dress for someone else. He must be hating his shes unto death, right? This Luo Fenghua is really blinded by greed, his heart is gradually turning black. He is not a good person. Su Suanglin was sitting in front of a small greasy table. He was holding a cup of tea that was about to reach his mouth, but he did not drink it. He just sat there listening to the conversation in a daze. His vision was turning black. The earth was spinning and the sky was falling down on him. He had never thought that in the end, Luo Fenghua would make such a choice. He would rather bear misunderstandings and hatred. He would rather be condemned by thousands and spurned by tens of thousands. He would rather suffer the evil curse himself every full moon night until the end of his life. Luo Fenghua could not personally stab this sharp sword into his disciple's heart. In the end, he was one step behind. Tap. 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 Footsteps slowly sounded. Su Suanglin broke away from his memories. He opened his eyes. In his blurred vision, the face of a young man appeared. On the desolate soul summoning platform, Mo Ran walked in front of him and half knelt down, looking at him. In that instant, Su Suanglin felt that this young man's eyes were very strange. There were too many things hidden in them. He did not seem like a young man in his early twenties. Mo Ran said. Nangong Lu, you planned all of this to bring him back to life. It's none of your business. You left Nangong Lu behind and intended to resurrect Luo Fenghua. From then on, no one would be able to enter this Jiao Mountain. You want to spend the rest of your life here in peace with him. Am I right? Su Suanglin shouted harshly, it's none of your business. Mo Ran picked up the broken spirit core on the ground. There was still light flowing in the core. He said, you disguised yourself and returned to Nangong Liu's side as Su Suanglin. 
you instigated him to fight and take back the sect leader position because you could not bear to see Luo Fenghua suffer the pain of the curse every night, living a life worse than death. What makes you think you can guess what's in my heart? Su Suanglin's eyes were red. There was a moist and ruthless light in them. You think you know everything. I don't. I can only guess, Mo Ran said. But looking at your expression, I also feel that my guess is not wrong. Su Suanglin gritted his teeth and spat out, the younger generation is arrogant. It's all the same. When you were twenty years old, didn't you also become arrogant? Mo Ran looked at him calmly. Nangong Su, that year you helped your elder brother regain the position of sect leader but you did not expect that being plotted against twice in obtaining the sect leader position, he had become ruthless. You did not expect that after he seized Luo Fenghua's position, he would cut the weeds and eliminate the roots and kill him. You did not expect his death at all. Your mind was in chaos. You did not know what to do. He stared at Su Suanglin's face. He understood that kind of despair better than anyone else. Reading Su Suanglin's heart is the same as reading his own heart. In despair, to what lengths can you go through? End chapter.